Woodworking projects come in all shapes and sizes, from giant armoires to building out a whole set of kitchen cabinets. You can go all the way down to small gift boxes. Today we're staying on the smaller end of the scale and we're building these small plant stands. I'm going to show you just how easy it is. They're great to hold those small, popular succulent plants, even those little air plants, or in our case, the fake plants that are much harder to kill. The best part is, most of the work can be done right here at the table saw, so it's time to start building. The main part of our plant stand is this central octagonal post. It's pretty hard to find pieces of wood that are this thick, so we're going to glue it up out of two thinner blanks. And you can also see that you can create these plant stands in any height that you want. Before we grab the glue bottle and the clamps though, what I want to do is create a hole in the middle of it for any excess water to be able to drain away. And I can do that right here using a dado blade. What I'll do is make a shallow cut in each of the halves and then I can glue them together. With the grooves in our two pieces cut, once I put them together, you'll be able to see how that creates the hole for the excess water. Now I can glue these up, and the key thing here is I want to make sure that I apply a good amount of glue to get a good strong joint, but what I don't want to do is get glue into the groove where it could clog it, because that defeats the whole purpose. So I'll put, it on, put the glue on, and then I'll just put them together and spread it around a little. There, and get a decent amount of coverage, and I'll use the uh, finger brush a little bit just to make sure I have... Good amount of glue there, and I'll apply some clamps. Now we'll let that dry a little bit before we move on to the next step in the process. Once the clamps come off and you've cleaned up the edges on our blank, we're ready to turn the square into an octagon. For that, I've done a blade change, putting in a combination blade and then angling it over 45 degrees. And then it's just a matter of knocking off each of the four corners. Our column's really taking shape now, and we have it in its octagonal final shape. What we want to do now before moving on is to cut a cross hatch pattern in the bottom of it for those arched feet that we'll be adding in just a little bit. To do that, it's another blade change. Here, back to a dado blade, but this time 3 eighths of an inch wide. And then we'll make a cut in one direction, and then rotate it 90 degrees and make a second cut. Now what you're working with here is kind of a tall block, so you want to take it easy here and keep it flat against the table and against the rip fence for the smoothest, straightest cut. Now I said I'd do most of the work here at the table saw, and it's true, but it doesn't mean that I'm going to use just the table saw. For this next step, we're going to create a recess in the top of our post where the plants are going to rest. To do that, I'm going to use a small plunge router, but I need a way to be able to guide that. So I have this uh, template that I'm going to use that has a circle in it that matches the size of my opening. And then on the bottom are a series of cleats that capture the post in between. So I can just set that in place, and I'm still going to use a clamp just to Make sure it doesn't slide around on me and give it a solid grip there. For the bit, I'm using, like I said, a plunge router, but then I'm using a pattern bit that has a bearing on the top edge, and that bearing is going to follow the hole in my pattern. Now the cutting edge on this bit is pretty short, so I'll make two passes using the template, and then I'll pull the template off 
and then the bearing can now follow the established circle that I already have while I complete the recess. Our final, final step on the column of our plant stand is to ease these top edges with a chamfer. Typically you do that at the router table, but you can actually take care of it right here at the table saw. The setup here is a little bit familiar, a little bit different. We've switched the blade so that it's a single blade again and tilted it 45 degrees. To control the workpiece, I'm gonna use the miter gauge with a long auxiliary fence. You'll also notice that I've attached a stop block here, and that's gonna make sure that the chamfer that's created on both the top and bottom edges of the column are gonna be consistent on all eight of the facets. It's a little bit of a repetitive job, but it goes pretty quickly. The base for our plant stand consists of two intersecting pieces. I'm using a contrasting material here, and I'm going with Wenge because I like the dark color and the distinct grain lines in it. Now the first step in the process is to create a notch on the upper edge of each of these pieces so that it wraps around the bottom of the column and fits in those grooves that I cut earlier. To make these cuts, I've installed the 3 8 inch dado blade again, and I'm using the miter gauge, and what I'll do is cut a notch on each end of the piece, and then I'll remove the waste in between. And once that's done, we'll cut the joinery that allows them to cross over each other. The setup for cutting the notches that allow the base pieces to intersect is pretty much the same as what we've been using. Same 3 8 inch dado blade, same miter gauge. What's different here though is that I've raised the dado blade to 5 8 of an inch and I've repositioned my stop block so that when I cut those notches, they're perfectly centered along the length of my base pieces. Now there's one thing you really want to keep it track of here is that the notches are going to get cut on the top edge of one of the pieces and then the bottom edge of the other. That way they'll overlap each other. If you miscut one, you're going to have to start over with a new piece. In order to wrap things up on the base, all you need to do now is to cut a gentle arc on the bottom edge of the two pieces. This is a pretty easy cut over at the bandsaw. There's going to be some blade marks, but you can sand those away pretty smoothly. Now one thing that you want to do, and you'll notice here, is that when the base goes together, it would block the water hole in the post. So assemble the base and then drill a shallow hole through it. 
Now I'm ready to assemble it. And because I don't want to get any glue in that hole, I'll just fit those pieces together without glue. But what I can do is put just a little bit of glue in the grooves on the bottom of the column just to hold it in place. Frankly, this piece isn't going to see a lot of stress, so I can set that in place now. There you go, and this piece is pretty much ready for final sanding and some finish. What you end up with is a distinct way to show off your woodworking skills and display a succulent plant or even a fake plant. I hope you try building one of these. It doesn't take long to do, and maybe even throw a little something extra in it to just to change it up and personalize the project for yourself. Woodsmithplans.com Hundreds of professional, high-quality woodworking plans right at your fingertips. Every single plan is presented as an easy-to-download digital package that includes pages of step-by-step -step instructions, full-color photos, illustrations, and exploded views, retail sources for hardware and supplies, plus a cutting diagram and materials list. Many plans offer handy video overviews and guides, Plus, we're proud to offer our plans in both standard and metric. Everything is here, from gorgeous heirloom furniture projects to handy shop projects and upgrades, clever, cost-effective storage solutions, as well as weekend projects and accessories that are great for gifts, all fully searchable and categorized for easy browsing. Woodsmithplans.com, everything you need for building fine woodworking projects.